On this week of Dice for Life, we talk about the chaos that is running a large business, the trials and tribulations of that. Uh, talk about Peter with interviewing Tim Crow. I interviewed Joel Farron. Uh, we give a little teaser about that. And consistency, staying in a job. Yeah, and how to make it brilliant, how to make the week work. How to, how to have the right amount of patience to actually get where you want to go. See you then. Welcome to another episode of Dietitian Life, where we tell you about our weeks and give you bulk content. <laughs> bulk. Yeah. Always. Always at Ink, are you? Always at Ink. Well, not always, but hopeful. Mm -hmm. So, Tyson, how was your week? Shit. Nah, it was all right. Kind of. Uh, as you may have seen on Snap. I was quite honest on Snap about my week this week and the difficulties that come with running a big business. Yeah, I think there was a lot of Snapchat conversation about that. <laughs> Just a little bit. I think I did like three minutes worth on Snap, which is massive. I feel like it was longer. No, it was only like three minutes. I thought about putting it on IGTV, but I next take time. Over my social channel. No, I'll take over IGTV and you can have an Instagram. Isn't it the same? Everyone throws likes. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so basically my week, I will go through pretty much what I've done. Um, did a LinkedIn post actually fortuitously on Sunday about loving what you do um, and that there's shit, shit days. Um, but as long as, pretty much, but as long as the good days outweigh the bad, then you're probably doing the right thing. Um, so you've got to try and think bigger picture instead of Insta, um, Yeah, instead of what's days. happening. So like this week, if you looked at it just as a week, if my whole life was this week, then I wouldn't want to do what I do for a living. No, um, yeah, so you'd run and you would go work at a bar <laughs> or do something that didn't have any responsibility. Um, but big picture, like it's still awesome and we've still got employing a million dietitians and giving them work and then doing this and doing having the opportunity to do scholarships and Peter just interviewed Tim Crow today, which she'll be pretty jazzed about talking about. Um, and then, yeah, I don't know, like overall it's great, but um, yeah, for those days it can be quite shit. Um, <laughs> so yeah, on that, on that happy note, we'll continue. Uh, so I also interviewed Joel Ferrin this week. Uh, the nutrition guy on Insta. Um, so I just had a good chat to him about his journey to fire and ask him some specific questions around how to, I guess, build your personal brand uh, in dietetics in on the Instagram space where he's probably most prevalent. Uh, and he talked about working with different corporate companies, doing um, recipe books for, for different companies and things of that nature which is pretty cool, something a bit different. And yeah, he talked about his general week uh, and and what kind of, because uh, there's no real general week for him and it all just bounces around. So have a look at that content. I think it was posted probably two days ago. So scroll back through Facebook and have a look. Uh, also, a lot of the stuff I've done this week is around kind of advocacy uh, in dietetics for our services, clinical relevancy and clinical justification of things, helping practitioners with that, implementing some new strategies around that, talking to Peter about different strategies moving forward, as well as big, big business strategies and possible changes, depending on, on how we go about things. Um, so yeah, it's been a big, yeah, and that, that's probably somewhat of a knee jerk reaction, but at the same time, not so much. So just talking about different ways that we can approach, I guess, the business and make things better for everyone, pretty much. Uh, also talked a lot, well, Peter and I talked a lot about engagement in the company, different practitioners, different contractors, and how to better help them engage with the company and reward people for that engagement. Um, so we talked a bit about that. I got these shirts from the tech guy, um, basically. Short yeah, this is short. I don't know. It's it's weird. Like I, I usually buy these shirts online. The sleeves are never usually that. Mm -hmm. It's just like this is a small. I don't know. It's not a small, but it's a small. 
And like short sleeves is like girl sleeves. Yeah, I know, it's like seeing more of your arm than you normally do. Because <sighs> I'm so massive. Mm. Interesting. <laughs> um, so basically, with this, you can scan, you can take a photo of it, or scan it with your camera, you don't even have to take a photo, and then it will link directly to a website. So can I try it, will, it now? You can, but we haven't built the website. Mm. So it'll pop up. We can, when I build the website, we'll do it on here and we'll show you where it is. And then on here, if you've got a Samsung or an iPhone with an app, you can just tap the back of your phone and the same thing. It's just like a, it's an NFC chip. So you basically just tap and then it'll just open up, uh, like add me on LinkedIn or it'll be our website going, you know, subscribe or here's my contact details, just like an e-business card or an e-business thing. And we can do cool things like link a ebook or something to that. So everyone that sees us, sees a shirt, does it a tap, they'll get that. So it'll be specifically for what? Very cool. Yeah, something a little bit different. I don't know if you guys know anyone that has these, but probably not. <laughs> um, and you're pretty much gonna wear these shirts anywhere, aren't you? So people just come up to you and start tapping you. No, if you know, people- Invade in your personal space, because you'll love that. Um, yeah, I'm very personable. Um, <laughs> I like people being around me at all times. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but if, if in the right situation, people wanted to just walk past and not talk to me and just tap, sweet, go for it. Um, but I'm thinking more for conferences and things of that nature, if we do, or unis, when we do the speaking at different unis and stuff, um, would be cool. Yeah, like as an entry, they walk up and they just, you know, hey. Okay. Right. Instead of shaking my hand, yeah, tap my shoulder. <laughs> I don't like you touching my hands. <laughs> yes. yeah. Sorry, just wash my hands. Uh, uh, also talked about, oh, didn't talk about it, but had some sweet news on Monday morning, which probably set off the week really well um, with one of our practitioners uh, choosing to go back to uni. Not just any practitioner either, so that obviously makes it a bit more. Yeah, a practitioner has been with me pretty much since the start um, of Feel Your Life. So, she wants to go back to uni and do something else um, fun to that she's passionate about, which is which is completely fine. But thankfully, she knows nothing about the job and she really wants to keep working for us at the moment. So, trying to manipulate her workload down to a part-time workload, so then she can still do both. And then talking about who to kind of fill the void um, because it's going to be at least another two days worth of work that needs to go to someone, and it's. Um, not base level work. So need to be strategic about who we're doing and it's likely we're gonna have to throw a couple of people in the deep end um, as a result. Still waiting to have that conversation, Tyson. Yes, still waiting to have that conversation. Um, so what, you haven't had your conversation? There we go, she hasn't done her job. Excuse me, I have made contact, but that person has been busy all day apparently, so. And I'm having a conversation with mine this afternoon. Yes, it's so. an afternoon job for me. So yeah, basically we're working on that because uh, that's a big, big change and one that I didn't, well, didn't really expect, but just didn't want to happen um, ever. Just be like if Peter told me she was <laughs> leaving, I'd just go, all right, well, business is done, close up shop. <laughs> uh, also looked at new logos for Sunshine Coast Titanics, um, new branding for there, just working with the graphic designer on that, um, which has been cool. And then just talked a little bit about perspective around boredom. Um, so as you probably saw on Snap, just talking about as a new grad or an experienced dietitian or anything like that, finding the joy in what you're actually doing rather than finding the bad, which kind of tied into my LinkedIn post earlier in the week. Which kind of ties into life in general, to be honest. Yeah. We have the tendency, as we are all, um, have a tendency to focus on the crap and not focus on the good. Um, and I think I made a reference to that in my latest LinkedIn post. Check it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but it is, it is, it's hard. So it's obviously hard to think about how good you have it until you realize you don't have it anymore. Um, but also how to be innovative and think about things differently when you are feeling you know, oppressed in a workload or you don't have the opportunity to do that. Um, so I think it's important to probably take stock of that. Um, take time to step away from work for a little bit, whether it be a day, a week, um, two hours, uh, yeah, whatever, and just, you know, think, 
uh, a lot of people don't actually allow that to happen. They're either busy with, you know, checking Facebook or LinkedIn or whatever, um, taking time to switch off everything that you have and just thinking and let the thoughts come over you. Um, I think that's pretty, pretty important because you do, you become really insular. If you're seeing clients every day, day in and day out, you just want to get out of the door, you're tired, whatever, you just don't get the chance to think about maybe a new way to approach a person, um, think about business differently, uh, think about what you might want to do differently as well. So, yeah, the importance of obviously identifying that and whether it be that you do actually want to leave a job, you want to move on and do something different. Um, but I think irrespective, if you continue to think the same way and have the same approaches, whether it be in dietetics or a different job, it's probably going to end up with the same um, the same outcome, which is, okay, I can move on, let's try something different, I need a, yeah, new, well, a new rabbit to chase. Yeah, well, a job's still a job, regardless of what you think it's going to be. And I think I mentioned this snap as well, it's just like people have a grand idea about what it's going to be like to be passionate about whatever it is, whether it be accounting or lawyering or a dietitian. Mm -hmm. And then you come out and it's still a job. <laughs> you still have to do something every day. Yeah, you might talk about food every day, but when you do something every day, it's different to when you are just passionate about it and you're doing it because of your passion. It becomes a job. Um, so it's looking at it and finding the why as to why you're doing it and, and find that passion for, for what you're actually doing, what you're actually achieving rather than oh crap, I've got to go see 10 more patients who are newly diagnosed with diabetes. And I'm going to tell them the exact same thing in the next 10 sessions. Mm. And like Peter and I always kind of challenge people on that. It's just like, well, you don't. <laughs> you don't have to tell them the exact same thing in the exact same way every single time. And to keep yourself interested and your client engaged, it's looking at things differently. And I think, did you talk about that in LinkedIn? Yeah, just about looking at things differently and trying new, trying new things within your role um, rather than instantly going, all right, no, nah, not doing that anymore. I'm going to go jump to the next stone. Um, it's yeah, I would get so excited by the end of the year because I'm not a big take a holiday person, um, but obviously you're encouraged to do that over Christmas because nobody wants to see a dietitian over Christmas um, and you wouldn't have that one-on-one -on -one client contact and I would just immerse myself in either a book relating to something in dietetics, um, which again, it's only a really few things that I read. I don't read anything else, but no desire whatsoever. Um, and I would come back super jazzed, super excited about a different way of approach someone with fatty liver disease or, um, you know, a new way to think about health and, you know, the public health system in general or whatever it might be, because um, you've got that time to do so. And, you know, instead of coming back at the beginning of the year feeling really, oh my God, I can't, you know, believe when I see somebody else with high cholesterol again 10 times in one day, I'm like, you know what, let's do it this way. Let's try it this way. So, and it worked, it helped. And that's why I'm still here. I'm still a dietitian. And we talked a little bit about I don't know, five year, seven year itch type thing. I think with every job, especially nowadays, like you think, oh, well, I've done that. I don't really like it. I'm going to try something new. Whereas if you take that approach in finding ways to excite you about the current role that you're doing, I think it keeps you interested and keeps you engaged. Um, whether it be doing professional development and using that or reading a book and using that or just communicating in a different way, um, not taking the same structure every single time. Like sometimes it works and if it works for you, go for it. But if you are looking for that, what can excite me? I think mixing it up a bit or forcing yourself to mix it up a bit and challenge yourself is kind of what we as humans probably want. Um, it's a bit of a challenge most of the time. It's in dietetics. Mm, it's oh. Yeah, it's different. I think people respond to new things. Like, mm. you know, personal. Yeah, some people don't like change and I love, well, I don't love it, but it's good. I do. Mm. I'll change. But, but change within within reason. Uh, within this space. <laughs> within this space. Uh, and then, oh yeah, the other thing was probably something more advice than everything else, which is probably where we can give a little bit of value, is that just coming from someone that runs a company um, and someone that manages staff, and we both manage staff. Uh, it's just about the right type of communication or advocating for your own skills or, um, worth or value like we always kind of emphasize the whole work first then ask don't go and ask for something and then go nah i won't do it unless you know i get extra money for that or, or whatever else so for example it's like all right so i'm only going to improve the way i do my meal plans when you pay me more to do a meal plan versus 
look how good my meal plans are. I've taken off all your advice and smashing it. I think it's worth more money now. You know, like whichever, I think it's just <laughs> the latter is by far the best way to go because then you can show your actual value rather than a promise that you may not deliver on. And as a business owner, it's hard for me to go, oh, well, you know, you told me you're gonna do it. So yeah, I'll, I'll give you some money and then wait for you to do it. It's just a, sh it's a shitty business decision. And I think it's a shitty um, kind of employee, employee or contractor kind of thing. Like if you've got no clout or whatever for it, and you can also make me feel guilty or make your employer, if you, you're working for someone and you want extra money or you, you want whatever, go above and beyond. Use that guilt that that person will feel for the work that you're doing to go, well, look, I've done all this work and I haven't asked for anything, but I'd really appreciate it if you, you know, acknowledge that. And it might be money. It might be just public acknowledgement. It might be... Mm, what? Give them public acknowledgement or no, money? No, make you feel guilty. Or make me feel guilty. <laughs> Because you feel guilty every day when I have to deal with certain things that happen. Hmm. But you know, hey, Peter. yeah, but I also didn't. Um, I don't think I asked for a raise until maybe I came back from maternity leave. Yeah. Which was about two years in, um, either. But you gave me one even before that. So, and I, you know, you just do stuff. You don't expect for anything different. Um, you just do it because that's just you as a person. So I think we have the expectation when we see it happening across the board or you think that that's important that because you're a you know, level one, two or three or you've been out for five years, this is how much you're worth. Um, but absolutely not. No, I, like I think I've said it on here, I don't know if I have, but I don't care if you've got five years experience or one. If that person with one year experience is good, someone with five, you get the same amount. Mm. Like you can track so quickly up and not everyone runs a business like I do. Other people will just go, nah, this is what it is. You go up by this much every 12 months. That's all it is. I don't want to talk about raises regardless. Mm. But I guess the way that I run it or whatever, it's just like, if you show worth, if you show value, then you can ask. And there's still going to be a limit. Like still going to run a business. And there's a lot of things that people don't recognize as part of mm. a business and the expenses that come along with it. So mm. what you believe is, yeah, the, the amount you should get paid versus whatever. It's just like, well, you don't actually know what's going out of the business to help support you or your management or the admin or the mm -hmm. transaction fees or relationships or organizations you work with. So, um, plus all the, you know, long nights and five years of working your friggin' ass off that I don't get paid for. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much my week other than what doing. Yeah, that's pretty much it. We've signed a couple of contracts for clinics. We hit up today for some south coast of New South Wales clinics, hey, which kind of could go hand in hand with some of the stuff that we've Did talked you now? about. Yes. <coughs> yeah, I need to Sorry, give an answer got, to that. Yeah, I just got um, emailed um, today. Wait, wait, actually, wait, 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 no, a different one. Okay. But Nowra and um, that region. Not too far away. Yeah, but it's closer than um, it's closer. Canberra. Mm. Anyway, we're talking coy again, but <laughs> that's, yeah, it's pretty much, so other than all the other shit that's going on mm. in the background, we're still signing new contracts, still looking at new locations, still, I put a contract out to a dietitian, um, waiting on to hear back from there, mm. um, posing different roles to management. Um, so yeah, always moving. A lot of positives to go along with the couple of shitty negatives in the week. Mm, yes. So my role this week has been counsellor, support worker, um, alcohol drinker, <laughs> alcohol drinker. Star, starvation, um, all of the above. So I actually, I don't feel like I've actually done a lot this week. Um, I had some really good conversations with a couple of practitioners. We did, um, it's about that time of the year where we're doing, um, what are we calling them? Performance reviews. That, those things. So yeah, performance reviews, which was really good. Um, if you don't do it, it, it actually can be really important because probably don't have those sort of conversations around goals, what you've done well, it's a good opportunity if you've got a manager to go, hey, well done, you've done well. Um, I'm not talking about me, I'm actually talking about the other people that I was talking to, just so you know. Um, yeah, because acknowledging how far you've come in a six to 12 month period is sometimes really important, particularly if you don't get a lot of that validation all the time. 
um, it's probably a good opportunity to have some awkward conversations that maybe you kind of put off uh, or obviously might be valuable to their improvement ongoing. So I, I'm not a big formalization of structure type of person as you've probably gathered over this time, although I found the experience to be quite good, not just not really for myself, but um, for the other practitioners that obviously I support, I found it really good. Um, and each of them obviously did things differently. Um, so that's, that was really cool. Um, and it gave us some, so a good ways for me to probably push them a little bit too. So often we just get, like I said, sat on a laurel to just sit there and go, okay, I'm just gonna see these clients each day instead of always thinking bigger picture or taking stock at the end of six months and just say, okay, what do you want the next six months to look like? If you want it to stay the same, then this is all we need to do to make sure it stays the same. Otherwise it has a habit of going like this, unfortunately. And so the example being that the one thing that Peter asked me to do was? Huh? What was the one thing that you asked me for? <laughs> oh yeah, to keep to keep pushing me all the time, just keep prodding me. Keep trying to make her do things that she's not comfortable doing, mm -hmm. pretty much. So I can either fail at them and go, okay, right, I will, that was a complete and utter, or um, how can I do it better next time? Uh, and she's already started the progress on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're making my Friday night sound so exciting. I'm going to just go home and smash that bottle. Yeah, of alcohol drink that. All right. I really haven't drunk that much this week, actually. I'm not a big, you know, here's my depressed feeling. Let me curb it with food and alcohol type of person. Um, so that was good. I had my own evaluation um, with Tyson. I've hit up a lot of owners this week just to kind of. Uh, encourage and just touch base as well. Um, so different organisations we work with. Yeah, yeah, just to go, hey, we're still here, how are you going? Um, it's important for communication. Um, for myself, yep, yeah, so I've obviously written um, a LinkedIn blog article, etc., because I was frustrated like you were, so trying to put that out on paper as well. Um, coordinated some more meetings, because I've noticed here at Sunshine Coast that things are good with referrals, but we obviously want to make sure it continues to be that way. Um, and I've got an idea for where I want the business to go in the next six to 12 months. So um, yeah, we sent out bulk emails to the people that I've gone and seen just to touch base and then organize a few more. Um, and that's really important part of the process is follow up like we talked about last week, like follow up, follow up, follow up. Mm. Don't be annoying, but follow up. Yeah, it's pretty bloody important. And a lot of the time when you hit the back, you go, oh, I'm sorry, I read that, I've been too busy or something like that. Yeah, well, three clinics this week, I had to hit up again, and then two contracts have come through as a result. But yeah, it's just like, oh yeah, sorry. You know, I've got the email, I've just been busy. Just like, okay, <laughs> just prod me up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so a lot of my stuff this week was just talking to Tyson about bigger stuff and big picture stuff. Um, just trying to brainstorm, even though it's not probably pen to paper type of work. That's what Tyson does all the time. Um, obviously, I don't have as much time, but I still think it's important conversations to have irrespective. Um, so that's good. I also obviously interviewed um, Tim Crow. Hopefully everything's okay with that. If it's not, that's all right. He was a pretty cool guy. Um, so that'll be released on Wednesday. Mm, um, on the same page as us with a lot of things that we say, which is really cool. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Interestingly enough, good. this is funny. Uh, funny. Well, yeah, you just wouldn't think so. I think we're so different. Well, really? yeah. We, yeah. So one of them, um, I'll give you a teaser. So one of them was around just saying that you're passionate about being a dietitian and that you're passionate about food will not make you stand out from the rest. Good. <laughs> um, everybody is passionate about food. That is why they do dietetics. So what makes you actually different? I'm not, but most of the time. And like, it's you weird. are passionate about dietetics. Dietetics, yeah. not food. I don't oh, get into dietetics because of food. No, but at least passionate about the nutrition. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But then uh, actually, funnily enough, because I was working late and I needed some kind of difference. And there was a sports dietitians Australia kind of post on their Google groups and people were talking about how much they charge per day and stuff of that nature. And then like, oh, there's other people in the state getting paid, you know, 
a grand plus a day just to do consultancy work and we don't get that here and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, basically what I said was is that it's because marketing is, is somewhat of the issue where every single dietitian comes in and say, I'm really good at building rapport. <laughs> I provide evidence-based nutrition support. Just like, so does everyone. Mm. Like, everyone says that. Even though you're not going to be good at as building rapport as what you think, but everyone says, oh, I'm evidence-based, passionate about food, you know, oh, I love to cook, and it's just like, yeah, and? Mm. Um, it doesn't set you apart. So I think mm. people being more honest rather than thinking about, oh, this is what they want to hear, or this is what the tagline said in my dietetics degree when I applied for it. Like, yeah, and the other thing is time. So that was another big thing that we mentioned as well is that... Patience. Yeah, time, and it, it takes time. So, you know, he said 10 years plus. Um, for him and his, like where he is now. So, um, and also in relation to being a good dietitian, um, actually getting experience, you, you can't have that after five years. Like advanced APD status, five years is fine, but you know, even still plus then. So yeah, to be actually really good and to be uh, known or have, you know, thorough in-depth knowledge, not just, okay, I'm a dietitian, I provide, you know, evidence-based Yeah, or I'm a dietitian, I've got 15,000 followers on, on Instagram, it doesn't mean you're a good dietitian. Yeah. And like yeah. even Peter just said off camera that, you know, Tim never really saw that many clients, only for a year or so, mm. um, but he still provides a lot of, you know, support to the general public through Thinking Nutrition. If you don't know who Tim Crow is, Thinking Nutrition is his Facebook page. Mm. Um, so it's, you know, and there's different ways to go about it. You don't have to just see clients to build your skills, but I'm sure he, I'm sure we'll find out once I watch the video as well, that he does a buttload of work to make sure his bloody intelligence and knowledge is on point to ensure that he can do that, so. Mm. And then it's the translation of obviously yeah. that information to one-on-one -on -one consultation. So all of this is really valuable and really important, but I guess the take home for us, and obviously the reason why I'm having this conversation is that you just have to be patient. You just need to keep doing good work all the time, be consistent with it. Yes, if you want to probably be bigger than just, you know, a dietitian, if you want to have that same social media presence, if you want to own a massive company, if you want to be ridiculously successful in dietetics, unfortunately it takes a lot of time. You need to also develop your own personal skills, you know, client skills, etc. And you're not going to have that after two years. And I think you value that and the successes that you've made because it has taken the hard yards to get there. Whether you actually just want to be an amazing community clinical dietitian, you need to pretty much throw yourself in any role and make the most of it. That's why I've said on my LinkedIn post and also Carson alluded to, is that job, you know, job hopping is so common now instead of staying there and seeing what you can do with what you've got um, and you become experienced, you know, you become one of these idols that are so experienced because they've actually stayed and they've continued. Yeah, and then if you're in your organisation, <laughs> if you're in there for longer than a year or two or, or whatever, then you're likely, the person who owns the business are going to go, all right, so she's now really competent at all of that. I'm going to give her this extra thing and then you learn. Whereas if you jump to the next one, they don't know you from bar of soap. Mm -hmm. You're not going to just jump into a, an extra 10 different roles if you've never done it before or very rare for that to happen. So I think staying... Like if people want to come and see you, like, you know, someone rings up on the phone, oh. like, I want to see Peter and I don't want to see anybody else. It takes a long time before you get a name for yourself in the public, anywhere. And it takes a very long time if you want to be bigger and broader. And obviously it's easier now on social media, but also remember there is a shitload more people in there doing exactly the same thing for you. And unless you're selling something or you're a little bit different, um, yeah, it, you've just got to give it time. So that's why when it comes to jobs and what we've talked about and why we get so upset and frustrated and run down um, is because people just don't have faith or just don't give it the time to make it something great uh, and make it into something you want to have. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if that's as far as where, where I sit on it, but um, it was good to sort of see other people that are obviously in positions of strength, power, importance, significance, have the same views and thoughts around you know, what we are saying as well, so. It's been a good week, it's a good reflecting week as per usual, and it's got clinic day again today, um, nailing it, so loving that, <laughs> as per usual. Nailing it. <laughs> yeah, well I always say, you know, always wanted to just have, you know, always gonna be chronic 
challenges, but that's okay. Mm. Cool. That's us. Done. Subscribe to our YouTube channel down there. Do it. Do it.